community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, uh, looking good. Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. Uh, yesterday we had Paula Webb Douglas on the line, and uh, she was telling us about the mental part of trading, which her and her husband, Mark, worked on for many, many years. I met him in 83, and they became my second family, actually. Mark was the best man at my wedding, and Paula married us because she happens to be a preacher, which she works for the San Bernardino County uh, Sheriff's Department uh, over in Palm Springs. But uh, we worked a lot on that. And when I went to work for Commodity Corporation back in 19, uh, it was uh, it was January of 85. I worked with them for two years. The first thing they told us is uh, when you are in a, a situation for trading and there's a death in the family, if there's a divorce or if there's been a major accident, you're going to put on a three-month sabbatical and you'll be paid full and when you come back, you'll be working under the eyes of some of the other traders to make sure that you're doing the right thing, which I certainly understand that because of the emotional part of that. Yesterday, right during this show here, I got a phone call from uh, New Jersey, and it was from the hospice worker and also the doctor that's taking care of uh, Dr. Steve. And they told me that uh, on Monday that he probably had two days to go and this was Tuesday so I figured that was the call and that's why I took it and it was just the opposite he came out of the coma and he was doing pretty good and I spoke to him again today and he's actually doing pretty good and of course the doctor told me he said that's not unusual he said but his long-term outlook is not good and I said that's what I like about medicine doctor because it's the practice of medicine Give me the doctor that stopped practicing and can do it right. I say that with tongue in cheek. But I wanted to tell you of my uh, – oh, we got Mike on the – is Mike going to be with us today? Sure, Larry. Hey, Sorry. Mike, how are you doing? Hey, listen, why don't, why don't we do your segment now, and then I'll finish up my segment – uh, uh, on, the, on, on the second half of the show, and then we'll have you on again at uh, 2.30. How's that? 2.30? Okay, yeah, sounds good. We'll, do, it, we'll do, do a segment now, and then we'll do a segment at 2.30 because these uh, these uh, heating oil, gasoline, and, and crude oil, are, they're bouncing everywhere, and you, you had that called pretty good. Tell us what you're uh, looking at, and then we'll look at the S&P and maybe the gold, too. Okay. You want to look at the uh, so energies first? Yes, let's do the energies first, and also okay. including natural gas, if you could, please. Okay. Let's, uh, where's my screen share? Okay. Thank you, everybody who's watching. Hope you're having a good day. All right, so we got crude oil here has rolled over a bit. Uh, as you remember from our last call, we left that minor bullish reversal below here. Just doing a little backup. Uh, the, uh, well, even before that, the break below 65.31.30 and back above, I said warned a decent strength, which I said could last for days. We've seen 8.58 of that so far. And then Friday, we left the minor bullish reversal below warned about. We've seen 3.44 of that from the 70.45 open. And then the trade above 72.78 should bring in decent strength. Let me just see. Give me five seconds while I calculate something here on 194.2 because uh, I don't have my other screen at 191. So a decent penetration in there today is 82 ticks. And got to see if this made 82 below you right here. I'm sorry, I just said guess over here. 82, 166. Mm -hmm. Right, so we've seen a decent penetration back below this line. That means I'd be out of all longs and I'd be short the crude again. I'm looking for this to roll over for the next couple of days. That line is coming in at 
7159 minus 2.5 ticks per hour. That's this run right here. And um, be risking 82 ticks above, back above there. That warns a pressure for days. If we leave a maintain gap open lower tomorrow, that's going to leave a bearish reversal above, a moderate bearish reversal above. And you want me to look at the uh, unleaded gas and the heat, Larry? Yes, please. Yes, we certainly would like to cover the, the energies today. So the unleaded gas, we left a minor bearish, uh, bullish reversal below also three days ago. And that one, the break back above this line on Sunday night was really the key there that I said should bring in substantial strength. That was a trade above 237.29, which I said warns of a significant strength for days slash weeks. We'd seen 1426 of that so far. But like I said, that crude oil now um, puts a warning that this, this gas may roll over a bit here. So we'll have to see. Mm -hmm. And the heating oil, this also left a minor bullish reversal below four days ago. It was on Friday. I said we would warn a higher trade. We've seen 13.81 cents of that so far. And obviously, if you ever want to uh, translate that into crude, do crude dollars, you just times that by 0.42 for anybody who was wondering. Uh, and then the trade above 234.31, as said, warned of continued strength. We've seen eight cents of that so far, 8.02. And we're just, uh, I think, I said today has a good likelihood of seeing range expansion in there. I think we've almost got the same as yesterday so far, so it still, still has a piece to go. And the... Brent here looks very similar as the WTI. That also violated its line, pulled back right up here. So this would probably be a lower risk short. Mm -hmm. And obviously, we'd seen a nice run up over the past couple of days in there. Then the finally, the gas oil left the minor bullish reversal below there four days ago as well. And we also broke back above that major formation in here, which I didn't say. I, I didn't say this particularly has any particular projection to the upside, but there is a good likelihood that we'll see $100 out of that. Um, see here. But so far... $100 yeah. over what period of time, Mike? Um, you know, another week and a half. Okay. All right. That's uh, we've already enough. seen about four grand a contract. Hmm. And uh, just some other things to pay attention to. Uh, oddly enough, that so here's... Here's an interesting point in watching the curve of the crude oil, right? So for those who get my analysis, the, this is the June D spread. Now, the June D spread left the gap open lower two days ago and then further left the bearish day yesterday. And then if I said if it violated this bullish reversal below, it would further warn the pressure in the complex. So mm -hmm. in here on... Oh, the, Mike, we gotta, we got to pay a few bills. Can you hold uh, that for... Yeah. We'll be... Back in three minutes, folks. 877-927-6648. Mike Moore, more analytics. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors
Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Free at one eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Internationally at seven two seven eight seven three seven six one eight. Okay, we're back with Mike Moore of More Analytics. Please continue, Michael. Thanks for having me again. Um, so I wanted to just point this out to crude and energy traders that paying attention, this happens to be the six month curve. So this is the six month spread in the crude oil between June and December. Um, this can often be a harbinger of what's going to happen in the outrights. And you can see in here, I said that, um, I put some of this stuff on hold and then I said, um, as we left a maintain gap lower Tuesday, which is bearish, and today and yesterday's this was yesterday's going into today downside follow through is also bearish. A decent 24 ticks trade below 185 will further negate the short term bullish reversal below and add to bearishness. So this was the first thing right here three days ago that gave you a warning that this crude mate might rule over, and it's only today that the outrights. Um, I mean, it's been rolling over since up here, but didn't fall back down below. But today it's actually fallen back down below that line, as well as the June Dece has also failed a minor bullish reversal below that it had below. Um, and the heating oil we already looked at. Oh, the other spreads I just wanted to mention were the Arbob to heat spread. This has been bearish since the breakdown below this line to the tune of 3,700 a contract. And then the break below this line to the tune of 2700 contract. But in here, I say we're likely in a bullish correction against the move down from the high. So we're just chopping around in that. We'll probably go up to test some higher levels before that if rolling over to start a whole new bear structure. Mm -hmm. The only other option is it could be a bull structure if we take out these highs, it could keep on rallying. But uh, so in general, since we're still below these, in general, it's bearish, but short term, it's bullish, if that makes sense, which means that the, the unleaded gasoline is strong relative to the heat or the heat weak relative to the Arba. And the in the heating oil crack we talked about the other day, it said it hit a major. Um, sorry, let me just change this. Uh, held a major exhaustion level in here that I said could see a significant bounce in the days, weeks ahead. Can see that right here. Uh, the final air exha exhaustion at 2353 to 2212, which had the potential to bring a substantial bounce 
from the 2267 low. We've seen 534 ticks of that and even more today. And again, this just goes to show you understanding which of these to be long or short. Um, the heating oil difference between that and crude is about 5,600 over a period of a week. And the the um, gas crack, I also said we're starting a bullish correction, and we've been rallying up out of that from the break above this line right here, the break above this line, and then a further break above this line. If you take out this line, it's really gonna should really rally probably for another three four hundred ticks. Um, that line comes in at roughly thirty two forty two. So that means that. If we were to rally and continue rallying, you'd be better off being long the unleaded gas. If we were to dump and come off, you'd be better off being short the crude oil. And last but not least, we'll jump over to the natural gas. We had left a minor bullish reversal below, rallied up for two days, and we've just been chopping around. If this low holds, I said that this was at exhaustion level at 203.10. We talked about that on a previous show. And rallied up, I think, 224 ticks, right? Um, 224 ticks. If this low holds, that exhaustion level does have the potential to bring in a rally that could be 990 ticks from the low. And if it doesn't see that, like we thought it would over here or over here, it's still giving you a nice pop out of these different exhaustion levels. Do you want to take a look at the – do you have any questions on those, Larry? No, no, that's very clear. I like to see the spread stuff because, you know, I don't look at spreads like I used to when I was uh, doing grain spreads and stuff, but they work just as well in the energies. But uh, let's go on. Uh, let's take a look at the S&P. How's that? Okay. So the S&P 500, we left that bullish reversal below, warned about on the, on the, on the uh, fifth and rallied up and been chopping around a bit here. Um so pretty heavy volatility over here over the past couple of days. We have not violated that bullish reversal below. We would have to have a decent penetration below 4098 and a quarter to violate that. And so the market's trying to decide what it's going to do right here, whether or not this is just a big pullback in a bigger bearish correction or whether we're starting a new bull structure to, to run to higher levels. If we take out this formation above, that's going to project this upward 44 points. That comes in at 4165.27 minus 21 per hour, starting at 12.30. And I think if we start taking these out, you know, to 41.12 and a quarter, let me pull this up. Bear with me a second. 41.15.75 to 41.12 and a quarter. I think if we start settling down below there, we're probably going to knock it right back down to these lows and then test for lower exhaustion levels. And if we do take this out and this runs us up above these highs, this could be the start of a new bull structure. So we'll have to see. Any questions on that before I go to the gold? No, let's go to the gold. It's been wild enough, so let's talk yeah. about the gold. So the big the big uh, story in the gold we talked about a couple of days ago on, on Larry's show is this big thing in bold here. Okay. I said the solid trade below 2062.90 warns of solid pressure for days slash weeks. Um, and your average volatility in there, I think, is around $25, $29 an ounce right now. So we tried to come back up a couple times to test that stop above there. We couldn't get it here with the 2068.10 stop. Um, the stop was above the 2068. We tried again to pull up here to 2056. Couldn't get up there. And I think it's rolling over to continue to test below these areas. If it takes out this line right here, that's going to warn of pressure for $92. In addition, that came in at 19.9920 plus 0.4 of a tick per hour starting earlier this morning. That comes in right now at 19.9920. Um, and likewise, the only uh, tricky thing about that is there's some exhaustion levels we'll have to deal with right below that line. And obviously, this is a lot of congestion right here. So a decent break below, you'd be getting short right into a lot of this, this congestion. So it might be a better off play waiting for the decent break below there and then a pullback to the line or even towards a stop before you short it because there's a pretty good likelihood that we will see that. Okay. Mike, we have a question from one of our listeners is, do you follow the open interest and the commitment of traders on these uh, projections that you're looking at? 
I don't, but they're of a lot of value. So if you're looking at them, I would continue to do so. That's what a professional trader, a lot of professional traders do. I just mm -hmm. got so many things I'm looking at that. Uh, you're price oriented, and that's where the action is. So I <laughs> certainly agree with that. <laughs> there's there's a yeah. lot of value though. So that, I mean, that's an astute question. Yeah. Okay, well, well we got it. No, I think we're okay. Listen, Mike, we're going to have you on. Uh, they just told me here at TFNA, we're going to have you on tomorrow uh, at one thirty. Okay. Okay, because I have to, you know, I have to follow what they're telling me to do. So we're going to have you on tomorrow at one thirty, and I've got. I'll send you a couple things that, that uh, questions that they wanted to uh, work on that the people have asked, and we'll work on those tomorrow, and then cover uh, some of these other things that uh, they have in their mind. Uh, as far as maybe treasury day? bonds. Are you gonna, am I coming back for the Bitcoin? Or are we done for today? We're just we're done for today. We'll be back okay. tomorrow at one thirty. Okay. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Hey, thank well, you, I'm my friend. We'll see you tomorrow at one thirty, right? Mike. Mike Moore of More Analytics, folks. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, this is the chart of the gold. Yesterday, we said that we hit this level here, which was a 61% retracement of the high right back right up there and it was 78 percent level of that high right there and from there we had a pretty good break to the downside now when we know that these things break the 382 retracement it tells us with a pretty good degree of certainty that we're probably getting ready to have a move to the downside and if you were watching that today 
And we happen to be doing that. I am going to bring this to your attention here. If I can hit the right button, and I think there is the right button. This is a small eight minute chart. So each uh, three bars is a half an hour. And as you can see, we had our first 382 retracement right here. And then we had the big one right here. And of course, we've dropped about $10 an ounce from that level. This was not to be unexpected, folks. Yesterday, when we were on the show, we talked about the same thing happening in the silver market. And we want to get up here. And I'm going to finish the story about the Commodity Corporation in just a moment. But I wanted to cover the precious metals. We went right up to our beautiful uh, ABCD at the 78.6 level, the 26.20 in silver saying that that is most probably going to be a very significant high. Now, if we use the same train of thought like we did with the gold is after that high is made, look for the 3A2 retracement. I know uh, this seems like really simple stuff and it probably is, but simplicity trumps complexity. And as you can see here, there was your first 3A2 retracement, there was your second 3A2 retracement, and this is a strong trending market to the downside. Now, if, well, on the first part of the show, I talked about being a Conti and a Commodity Corporation, and uh, they put you on sabbatical for three months with death um, or, or a um, divorce or uh, an accident. Those were the ones. Well, I went through a very emotional thing yesterday, as most of you know, and I had a nice long talk with uh, – Paula, and she said, you should tell the folks, because I've been doing this for so long, some of the most important things that have happened to me that were emotional. January 20th, 1970, I was with Eli Lilly. I was in New York on a thing, and they had the, they I always flew commercial, but that day they took me back on the corporate plane, and uh, we landed in Terre Haute, and they told me my mother had had a stroke, and she was very near death. She was only uh, at that time, you know, I was, uh, I was, I was, how old was I? I was, uh, I, I was, I was 39. Mom was 46. She was, uh, she had me when she was 16. She just turned 16 when she had me. And so we were very, very close our whole lives. I spoke to her every day, every day. And anyway, uh, she passed away. Uh, the second time that it was very emotional for me was when my daughter, uh, Jill had an infection, and she was at Cedar sinai Medical Center. It was a lung infection, and it was undiagnosable, and they really had a hard time. And fortunately, because I was in charge of the Eli Lilly stuff for uh, USC and also for Cedar sinai and Lilly, I gave you know, my – I didn't write the checks, but I delivered the checks to the department heads, you know, for the research stuff. And so I got a – a lot of extra stuff. And so we had the best doctor in Los Angeles area. His name was Tom Calcaterra. He was married to the actress Sandy Duncan, who was on uh, Laugh-In. I never met her, but I, had, I did I did know Tom. And uh, he said, uh, I think I can take care of this, he said, but it's going to take a couple hours. And he said, uh, how will we know? He says, well, if you see me walking down the hall, he says, that's not going to be good news. And so we waited about three hours, and we were standing there. Uh, my wife and I, and we heard the door open from the surgery area, and out he walked. And I looked over, and all I heard was a thud. Uh, my ex-wife fainted, and he came running down the hall. He said, no, no, no. Of course, by she's out of it, and everything was great. He just wanted to tell us what had happened. There had been a little cyst on the top of the lung, and he was able to take care of it. But she had to be revived. That was uh, uh, very, very emotional for me. And uh, the other one that was really emotional, there's two others that I that are very important. This was in uh, April of 1986. I was in San Luis Obispo, and uh, Jack LaLanne's wife, Lala uh, Elaine, her nickname was Lala, uh, had a psychic. And uh, she said, I want to give you a session with this psychic. So, I, you know, I did it as a favor because I don't believe that stuff. So I go out to the dunes there in uh, Pismo Beach. It was a windy day, and it was a little chilly. I had a little jacket on, and the lady was there, very attractive woman in her 50s. And uh, she said, here, we'll sit here on the blanket. I says, it's kind of windy here. She said, no. She says, that'll pass. And 
I'm saying, what do you mean pass? I'm watching the I'm watching the wheat grass or the uh, the uh, sea grass, you know, blowing in the wind. It was really windy. We're sitting there on the blanket, and pretty soon, there's no wind, and I'm watching the grass around me blowing, and yet there's no wind where I'm sitting. And so she started telling me about my life. And folks, this woman told me everything about my life, things that nobody knew other than me that I never shared with anybody. And she know she knew those things. And how do you know that? And she says, well, I'm in tune to what you're going through. And she said, uh, and I told her, I said, you know, I've done really well in financial markets. And, you know, now I had just left Conti, or Commodity Corporation. And uh, I wasn't really doing much other than helping John with my licenses at, uh, at uh, Bateman Eichler uh, there in San Luis and in Santa Maria. And she said, oh, she says, you're going to be extremely famous. You're going to write lots of books. He says, you're going to travel all over the world. And uh, you're going to uh, be uh, on TV and uh, all kinds of stuff. And she said, you're going to have many women in your life. And, and, uh, and here I am, you know, about as monogamous as a, as a Catholic priest. And uh, she said, uh, you're going to live a very, very long life. And uh, she, said, you're, she said, I'm just really happy to even met you. And I'm saying to myself, are you kidding me? And then uh, write a book. I'm, are you kidding me? I never would have thought about it. And a year and a half later, I had written Astral Cycles. And since that time, I wrote a bunch of books. And I've traveled all over the world. I've been on TV. I'm not as famous maybe as I'd like to be, but I'm still pretty happy. But that, that to me, was a life-changing event uh, to me. And uh, my health has been good. I'm you know, still able to uh, chew some of my own food. But, uh, you know, that was the main thing. And then finally... The only one that was ever related to money was this one, and that was when in, in October 1980, uh, I was at Drexel, and uh, it was um, I had shorted gold at a 61% retracement at around $680 an ounce. Remember, the high had been 865 We broke down to about 400 and then into, into October of that year, it was right at a 61% retracement on that Friday, and I had a position on, I had 400 contracts for... I was trading $20 million, so 400 contracts was not a lot. It was a lot. But anyway, I was uh, I got up to, well, I'm probably not going to be able to finish this on this segment, but we're going to try to do it anyway when we come back from the break. But uh, the first thing I did in the morning, I'd get up at 5 o'clock and I took a shower. I had a radio in the shower, so I would listen to KNX TV, KNX Radio, and I'll tell you about this uh, when we get back from the break. 877-927-6648 You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today 
and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Okay, folks, I was telling a story about October of 1980. I was short a bunch of gold. And I was in the shower getting ready to go to work, and I uh, listened to Charles Osgood, Charles Osgood of CBS News uh, coming out of KNX out of Los Angeles every day at, uh, at 5.15. And he said, ladies and gentlemen, he said, war has broken out into the Middle East. He said, Iranian jets have hit the Iraqi power, uh, nuclear power station, and the price of gold is soaring. I'll be back in a few minutes. And I'll tell you, folks, uh, the 400 contracts that I had was spread over probably 70 different accounts. Uh, and it was I knew and I figured, well, one hundred dollars an ounce, maybe two hundred dollars an ounce. And I've got, you know, 40 million. Uh, I got 20 million. So if I lose eight million, uh, it's October and we had a fabulous year. God, it was a fabulous year. I said, well. I'll work out of it, so I'm not going to worry about it. I turned off the uh, – I just I, – I didn't even bother to dry off. I threw on my sweats, no suit and tie. I got in my car, and I was in I was in Beverly Hills in about 13 minutes, usually from Westlake Village to Beverly Hills. It was about uh, 22 minutes, and I was flying. There was nobody there on the freeway. And so by the time I got to the – to the freeway, I turned the radio on, and it's, this is like a couple minutes later, and he's still going through the commercials, and then he goes through a whole bunch of other news stuff. And then finally, it's about six or seven minutes from the time he announced this thing, and I says, what the hell is it? And then he, then he says, yes, he said, there's a war going on in the Middle East, and he said, the price of gold is soaring. He said, the morning gold fix is up $2.35. Folks, I'll tell you, my... I just can't, I mean, I, I still get emotional about it because it was, I said, oh, dear God. I said, please let it be trading by the time I get to the office because I knew it was going limit down because I, when, when a market cannot react to that, I got in and it was down about $16. That was 10, 10, 15 minutes later. I had to open the doors myself. The wire operator wasn't even in yet. And I just picked up the phone. I called Goldberg Brothers and I sold another 50 contract spread out over a, a bunch of accounts i should have sold 100 but i was a little nervous and anyway it did go limit down and it went from uh that level at six uh 686 it eventually bottomed at when tom o'brien said it bottomed back in 2001 at 256 dollars now i didn't make anywhere near that but that october of that year i had i had made seven figures uh which was a considerable amount, and I had just a great year. But that was it was so apparent that everything was, you know, the news was so bullish, and that market could only be up two dollars and thirty five cents on the London fix. And uh, two or three years later, I'm on an airplane uh, going from uh, Chicago to uh, New York, and Charles Osgood is on the plane. And I walked up and I said, I want to say something to you. And, and you won't believe what he said to me. He said, sir, he said, I just read that shit. I don't write it. And 
And I started to laugh. I said, no, no. I said, and I told him the story. And he said, oh, thank God. He said, you can't believe how many people really rag on me to think that I make this stuff up. He said, I just read it off the teleprompter. I said, yeah, I know that. But, you know, I said it was a very emotional part of my life. But uh, anyway, that's uh, that's neither here nor there. I spoke to Steve Shapiro uh, this morning again, and I have to relay a couple of Funny stories. When Steve moved there to San Luis Obispo in uh, 86, uh, his mother came out to visit, and it was a Sunday, and we always, uh, at Graffoni's house, we always had salmon and pasta and uh, tri-tips and stuff, and we'd always have 30 or 4 people. Uh, I know I, I said the S word, I did, but that's what, I'm just, I didn't say it because I would never use the S word. That's what Charles Osgood good. You should call Charles. I forgot all about that. Anyway, we go to the party, and, and, and Mumsy Teitelbaum was uh, Steve's mother, and uh, she was uh, 76, and I was uh, 40. Uh, 50, no, I was 50. So she was 26 years older than me, and I said, come on, we're going to take you to the party. I didn't know Steve at all, and I met him once or twice, but I said, come on, your mom's going to come to the party, and you know there'll be about 30 people there, and she'll have a good time. And it was right on the beach, really cool. And so she goes in, and uh, Jack Lane and his wife were there every Sunday. And uh, they walked in, and she, Mumsy and, and, and uh, Elaine were high school and grade school buddies from uh, upper New York or Long Island or someplace like that. And when they saw each other, and Jack, of course, knew Mumsy, and it was just like old home week. It was just really, really funny to see. In fact, here's strangers from many, many years in this little tiny town of about 1,500 in California. So every Sunday from then on, we always uh, met and had a, had a great time. And then I have one other story that Steve said, and this is I, every Friday when I wrote the Astro Cycles newsletter, I had to write it by hand, then take it into the printer. The printer would take it, and then we'd take it over to the handicap section, and they would, uh, uh, at the uh, San Luis Obispo place there, and they would put the hand envelopes in and mail them out, put the stamps on, and it, that would be go out Saturday morning. So Friday, I, every Friday, I would go to the uh, the races down at Santa Maria, off-track betting there, because Mumsy liked to, to play the ponies from her old New York days, and so we would always go there, and uh, we would sit in this little tiny table at the end of the place and I would write the letter and she would handicap and stuff like that so I went over to make a bet and uh, as I was coming back some guy was uh, about her age uh, she would be you know, probably about 80 was uh, sitting at the table you know talking to Mumsy and so I come up and just just off the cuff I said hey man what are you moving in on my action you know she's she's 30 years older than me and the guy gets up and he runs out and she says to me boy she says Hanging around you means I'm never going to have any more fun. That's not the word she said, but I'm never going to have any more more fun hanging around you. This is the last day I'm going to come down here with you. Of course, she was joking, but they laughed about that. And that story got around San Luis Obispo that I never did live that one down. That was uh, that was one or two of the many that were there. Uh, there's a couple others that were really funny that involved... Well, I don't want to get into it. Now, anyway, that's it. We Hopefully, I, I made it through the show today. This part of it, we'll get through the second part. I got a lot of really good market stuff, folks, but frankly, I had no trading today. I, I saw seven great trades today. I wouldn't even click the button. I just uh, I just emotionally, for the fact that I was able to talk to my friend again was really uh Really pretty good, and I'm very apologized for saying the S word. I I even uh, I just slid it by slip of the tongue, but that's not bad. After 3,900 shows, I've never done it yet, so that's the first one. And so I'll use uh, what would I, what would be my defense on this? Well, we'll see what happens with that. We got some really important things happening in the market today, folks, and I will cover those. Uh, on the next show coming up, because uh, the, you 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 if you don't believe in Fibonacci, then don't listen because you, you won't believe it because there 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 was only one that didn't work, and uh, that was in the T bonds. Everything else was just absolutely uh, almost to uh, precision, like you uh, were hoped for when you're trading. So we'll take a break. Thanks.
If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, folks, I've uh, put the, uh, the one of the 382 patterns that we looked at today the one that lost was the treasury bond market. Uh, that one did not work. Uh, the next one we're looking at here is the gold. This was an eight-minute chart. There were two of them there. Of course, gold has broken down uh, quite a bit from uh, that level. Uh, if you'll remember uh, yesterday, um, this was the same uh, sequence of events because I wanted to show that uh, what happens on one day will probably happen on another day. And as you can see here, we went right up to the 382 here on the uh, soybean, uh, July soybeans, then broke down and made a new low. And tomorrow we have that monster crop report that we're going to be talking about when we uh, move on to the uh, next one to look at. And then today, if you were doing the same thing and preparing yourself, uh, shut the front door and raise the rent. Hold on just a minute here, and I'll get this up here for one second here. And we'll take a quick look at this. Here is the one here for today. You'll see that you made the, uh, there was your other 382. Then you came down and made another 382. And uh, that was right there. And of course, it's trading about 10 cents under that uh, level right now. There's so many of these, I'm not going to be able to cover them in this segment, but I'm going to be covering them. And I've also, I've already mentioned the one in silver and also the one in gold. 
but we want to cover some of the others in the stock market because they are just as important and they have a lot of really good action today which tells us that yes we are starting to uh, move lower part of this was caused by this speech by Jamie Dimon saying that things are not really copacetic here in Camelot and uh, remember he runs a big bank <laughs> 877-927-6648 We'll be right back. 